What's up, everybody? It's Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy. And we are back once again, this time with some UFC DFS picks and lineup advice, both FanDuel and DraftKings, this time for UFC Vegas 8 between Anthony Smith and Alexander Rakic out in Vegas. In this video, we're going to use the MMA Occupy model from OccupyFantasy.com to talk about some top plays. We're going to talk about the unique aspects of this slate from a lineup building perspective, give you some general tips on how to build those lineups for FanDuel and DraftKings using some projected roster percentages. Before we get started, though, go ahead and click that subscribe button below. That way you get access to all of our latest videos as soon as they're released here on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. We always appreciate that. Any comments, questions you have about this slate, go ahead and hop in the comments below. We'll answer them here before the slate starts at 6 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. We also love to hear who you think is going to be the highest scoring DraftKings play. So go ahead and comment below with your opinion on that as well. A couple more things before we get into the video. We will be live on Twitch on Saturday afternoon, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, live Q&A, answering your questions on how to build lineups, fan doing DraftKings. Go check that out, twitch.tv slash Occupy Fantasy. And for OccupyFantasy.com members, we're running a members-only free roll in our DraftKings League for tomorrow night's slate. Top five winners get free tickets to the $10 opening night GPP, the millionaire single game for NFL on September 10th. We've already given away 15 tickets in previous weeks, uh, so go join that. That link is in the description below. Now, let's hop over to the Occupy model on OccupyFantasy.com. And I currently have it sorted by DraftKings projected ownership. Our DraftKings ownership is provided by MMADFS.com. Our FanDuel ownership is provided by us. And you'll see Alex Caceres at the top. This is the most important fight on the entire slate for a variety of reasons. So Caceres was slated to take on Giga Chikaze to start the week. Chikaze had to drop out. They got a replacement in. That replacement then had to drop out. And now Caceres is fighting Austin Springer on just a couple of days' notice. Now, because FanDuel and DraftKings will not change their pricing after salaries initially are dropped, and Caceres was a pretty significant underdog against Chikaze to start, he's priced at 7400 on DraftKings. He's priced at $13 on FanDuel. And now against the newcomer, Austin Springer, he is a minus 190 favorite. So we had this situation a couple weeks ago, and it was with Jamal Emmers. You may remember uh, if you're watching our videos or you're watching or, or playing the slates. Uh, Emmers, not nearly as cheap. He was 7,800, but he did get up to like minus 400 on the money line. He ended up being 60% owned. Now that was a nine fight slate, so a little bit different. This is an 11 fight slate. Uh, but Caceres at 7,400 with not many great underdogs, no five round main event, which is another big issue here. Uh, we expect Caceres to be the highest on DraftKings and one of the highest on FanDuel. It's really interesting. If we look back at that Jamal Emmer slate where he was, uh, he ended up winning and uh, at 7,800 was a major, major value and the highest owned player on the slate. Uh, because of the difference in what his salary was and what it should have been, Combined with some underdog upsets, the optimal lineup on that slate on DraftKings left $2,200 left over in salary. That's pretty crazy. Normally here in these videos, we tell you to try to at least leave at least $1,000 left over to be different in your large field high risk contest. But a, a word of advice, a rule of thumb, when there's a mispriced fighter after a replacement, guys like Jamal Emmers of a few slates ago, guys like Alex Caceres for Saturday night, take the difference between what? their salary should have been and what it is now. So Caceres, he's minus 190. And if we sort by money line in the Occupy model, we see that minus 190 would have slotted him in probably at like 8,500-ish on DraftKings, 17 to $18 on FanDuel. So for DraftKings, if you're trying to build a high-risk unique lineup, uh, $1,000 plus his difference, he's now 7,400, he would be like 8,500. So you can probably leave at least $2,000 left over and have a chance at an optimal lineup here. Uh, on FanDuel, about a five, $4 or $5 difference. So uh, whatever you would normally would leave there, you could drop a couple of $4 or $5 off your minimum salary and be fine. A uh, very interesting slate. These are always super game theory heavy slates. Uh, Springer, on the other hand, if we sort by uh, OF index, I mean, there's room for chaos here. Springer actually ranks higher than him. And the reason is Springer, if you look at some of his fights, if he wins this fight against Caceres, it's likely going to come from takedowns and some ground and pound. And that should lead to some pretty good DraftKings scoring. Uh, and he's only a plus 165 underdog. It's not like some of these other 
crazy uh, mispriced fighters fighting against newcomers at minus 300, minus 400, minus 700 we've seen. But uh, Springer just plus 165, 21% projected ownership on DraftKings, plus the added leverage of a 60% owned fighter in Caceres. Really good idea for some chaos to play Austin Springer in at least a couple of your lineups. Um, so yeah, th- this fight is, is, is the key. I wouldn't say go 100% exposure. This slate in general doesn't have that high of upside. If we look, just six fighters above that 90 elite OF index mark. For those of you who aren't familiar, OF index is our Occupy model proprietary metric that ranks a fighter's ability not only to win, but the odds of them being in the optimal lineup when they do win. So a combination of the two. So we see six fighters over that 90 mark. We've seen some fights or some slates in the past where they've been way more than that. This looks like a more decision heavy card. But again, it is at the apex in Vegas, smaller cage that tends to lead to more crazy outcomes. So we'll see how that plays out here. Now, the main event is only three rounds this week. Uh, It's between uh, Alexander Rakic and Anthony Smith. Now, Anthony Smith, uh, if you've been watching these videos or if you've been a UFC fan, you definitely know about this. But actually, the slate earlier this season where I won $50,000, won the FanDuel GPP. It was on the slate. Anthony Smith was in the main event. He lost. Uh, He was famously telling the referee that all of his teeth were falling out. His fight, his corner wouldn't stop the fight. He wouldn't stop the fight. Eventually, they finally stopped it in round five. Um, He's back on the slate. Uh, Let's hope for another repeat for me, at least another $50,000 win. But yeah, he's back fighting Alexander Rakic. He is a, a... Plus two, let's go down to the bottom because that's where he is near the bottom of the model. Plus 225 underdog, so another big underdog. Again, it's only three rounds. So DraftKings, this is a regular priced fight. He's 7,500. Uh, Rockage is 8,700. But FanDuel, they fell asleep at the wheel. Uh, Rockage is $23 for some reason in the main event. He's the highest priced fighter on the slate despite not even being the highest money line favorite. And Smith, because he got the main event tag, I guess, uh, he's priced at $18 for literally no reason at all. We only project him to be 7% owned as a result. Again, it's not five rounds. You don't get those extra two rounds in the main event. No added scoring. There's no reason for him to be priced like he is. So if you're making limited lineups, uh, unless you are just unless you really like Anthony Smith or you're playing for crazy chaos, uh, not really much u- use of him on FanDuel. Speaking of FanDuel, we talked about this last week. Remember, you do get points for takedown defense. And we didn't mention this earlier, but with... Uh, let's, let's sort by money line here again. Oops. Um, Alex Caceres, Austin Springer does attempt a bunch of takedowns. He attempted nine against Chikadze in his contender series bout. So if Caceres wins, he likely defends a decent amount of takedowns from Springer. That's five points a pop on FanDuel. Those can rack up. And again, at $13, he should easily crush his value in a win. Uh, so we definitely like him a lot more on FanDuel as a result. Uh, DraftKings, a little more game theory to play if he ends up being 60% owned or higher. Uh, all right, before we get out of here, we've already talked about DraftKings, right? You, you want to leave a, some salary even more than usual this week. Limit yourself to three or four high-owned fighters. Go check the Occupy model for projected ownership. That updates constantly throughout tonight. We're recording this Friday evening all through Saturday afternoon as things change. Uh, so be sure to check your the projected ownership. Have no more than three high-owned fighters in your high-risk lineups. Low risk lineups, you want to get as many of those, those high projected owned fighters in your lineup as you can. Big difference. FanDuel, what we're looking to do is differentiate at the MVP spot. Generally, this is a little bit easier because of a five round main event. Those guys get inflated MVP ownerships. We have more uh, MVP options because of more KO potential. This slate's a little difficult because if you look at, if we sort by projected MVP ownership, Magomed Ankalov, Ricardo Lamas, Alexander Rakic, Sean Brady, these four guys all lead the metrics in potential first round KOs. First round KO probabilities is basically ranked like these four are ranked as far as FanDuel MVP projected ownership. So not a ton of leverage. The options, leave some salary, only use two high owned fighters in your flex spots if you use one of these four. Other options I think that are a little more high risk is you do use Caceres. Maybe he gets eight, 10 takedown defense points or uh, eight defend eight to 10 takedown defenses. That's five points a piece, an extra you know, 35, 40 points added to his total as a minus 190 favorites. No one's really going to use him in the MVP spot at $13. The other option is Kutalaba, 
who uh, 22% projected knockout is ninth highest or 10th highest on the slate, and he's a big underdog. So that goes to show if he wins, it's going to come from a big knockout, and that could potentially be optimal at MVP on this slate, especially if it comes in the late first round. So high-risk contest for making a bunch of lineups. Uh, Kutalab was another guy uh, who falls in the mix as a big underdog. Again, very, very high risk. All right, that'll do it for this video. Again, you have to really think about uh, the game theory in this one with the Caceres and Springer fight. That's ultimately what the slate's going to come down to. And again, the model's going to continue to update live as betting market changes. Uh, as anything else changes, this will update all through the day Saturday. Couple reminders, twitch.tv slash Occupy Fantasy, 4.30 p.m. on Saturday, live Q&A. Please, please join us. Get your questions answered there. You can always comment below for questions. Click the subscribe button below that we get access to all of our latest videos. A lot of new videos coming out soon with NFL starting in two weeks. So we definitely want to click that subscribe button. And uh, be sure to join our members only DraftKings League for a chance at some free satellite tickets for opening night NFL. Links in the description below for that league and instructions on how to join. So Brian Jester for Occupy Fantasy. Appreciate you listening as always. Good luck and we'll talk to you soon.